Today we're going to be talking about accessing elements based on their ID in Java. Let's get started. Okay, so if you remember from the last video that I did about constraint layouts, we built this layout. And you remember that we actually designed this to be much more in the landscape mode versus the portrait mode. So we're going to switch back to that. The main point of this video is to show you what this ID is for and how you actually access that in code. And this is very important as you go forward in Android development. The next thing that we're going to talk about is how to actually take that, reference a particular element, and then maybe change the value of it. And this is also going to be something that you're going to use for everything from changing text on a label to changing images to maybe even setting click handlers on buttons. So what I want to start by doing is let's very simply take a uh, text label here. And you can kind of see I need to zoom in a little bit. So I'm going to click on this one. I'm going to change this. You know, you can keep it to text view 5 and that will work just the same as long as you reference that ID. But to be honest with you, it's much better to name this something that is unique to your application. So we're going to call this left cat name. And then we're going to call this one right cat name. Now everything in Android is a resource ID. And we're lucky enough to be able to access it by this friendly name right cat name and this friendly name left cat name. So let's jump into our activity file that we have over in the Java folder. And I'm going to expand this up here. And I'm just going to show you very quickly how you access that. So the first thing we know is that it is a text view. And if you don't know what it is, what you can actually do is you can go back over here and you can see very quickly, after I change the name, it's actually got the type right to the right of it. Image view is the type. And if you were to change the name to something else, image view would show up to the right there. So we know that we need a text view, and we, we're going to call this left cat name. But how do we actually get the element itself? So there is a function on the activity called find view by ID. But in this case, we need to pass in the ID of it. And if you remember, we named this left cat name. So to access the ID, what we're going to use is the R, which is like the resource bundle. And we're going to do dot. And then we're see down here we have this ID uh, from autocomplete. We can just type in ID. So these are all the IDs that we have in the application as a whole. And we're going to, um, and the reason it is for the application as a whole is because we only really have one activity. Just keep that in mind that like the resource ID, you could potentially have some overlap between names in different um, activities that you want. Just make sure you're referencing them based on the context of your find view by ID. So for example, if you had a submit button in 10 different activities, you're going to be finding the submit button based on the current activity. Hopefully that makes sense. You remember that we called this left cat name. And Immediately, you can see that we have now returned left cat name um, ID into text view. So one thing to also note is if there's ever doubt that this would exist, you also want to do a check to verify that it's correct. I would recommend, you know, at least when you're starting out to understand that you need to do some safety checks. If it exists on the screen or if you're dynamically putting it in there, there are two different scenarios. So in our case, we know that left cat name is there, so I wouldn't do a null check here if I was building this into production. Because if left cat name was missing for some reason, I'd actually want to catch that right away. Let's add the next one now. So we're going to do text view right cat name. Find view by ID. R.id.writeCat name. So we've now accessed both left, left cat name and right cat name. Another thing to note real quick here is in previous versions of Android Studio, you used to have to cast this because this by default returns a view. 
Uh, but it is actually, in the newer versions, it will actually cast to the right part, right type or return the right type because it's more of a templated function now. Uh, but before, if you get any error, you may actually have to do something like that in front of it. And that's completely fine, depending on the version of um, Android Studio and the API version that you're building against. So how do we actually change the text on this? So left cat name is now accessible. We can do set text. Now in here, there are a bunch of different scenarios. You would ideally in a production app want to be referencing a resource. So you want to save your strings as a resource and reference them here. For the, for the sake of simplicity, we're not going to be translating this demo. I'm just going to throw in a, I'm the left side. And then we're going to do right cat name dot set text. And we're going to say, I'm the right side. And save that. So now if you were to run this, both of those would change appropriately. What about an image view? So let's just say this is le left cat image. And this one will get a little bit trickier. Um, yeah, we we'll want to update all those references. And we're going to do image view. It's very important though to make sure that you've also imported the right package. So if I were to type image view, and then I were to click over here, and then I come back, I'm going to type you know, left cat. You can notice that this is red. If you just click on this and hit Alt Enter, it, and you'll get an option to import that class. The other thing you can do is if, as autocomplete is completing, if you select the one from autocomplete or hit Enter, it'll auto add it to this import list up here. So if I were to expand this, you can now see that MV, image view is up here. So, and we do the same thing, find view by ID, cat image and I forgot my equal sign so we're going to add that in there all right so to set an image there are many different ways to do it and I'm going to show you a couple of them so you're going to see this set image drawable so you can actually create a drawable resource and pass that object in you can also do that for set background you can also uh, although set background isn't typically what you want for the image view, but there are certain types of elements that will need to have a background image behind them, and that's what you'd use for that. So we want to do set image. Now notice all the options that we have in here. What we have is we have a resource ID that we want to pass in. So we need to pick the one that set image resource because we have it over here already. Now you could actually create a bitmap or load in a bitmap with some of the bitmap helpers and set the actual bitmap object in there, which I have done quite a bit too in certain applications. So we're going to set image resource to r.id.cat3. Um, and notice that I did ID and I actually was thinking about the wrong thing there. It's r.drawable because you can think about the r being the resource folder, drawable being the subcategory, and now we want cat3. And then now you'll see that that's correct. So if you were to run this, this would say I'm the left side and I'm the right side. And the reason this is very important is because you need to be able to access almost every component of your, your XML file. Remember though, it's, you should always name them to something that makes sense for you in code. You want to almost like read the code as if you're telling a story. All right, so you can see I've loaded it up and I've got my layout, what I would expect. It's got, I'm the left side and I'm the right side. You can see that the strings are actually too long for what we're trying to accomplish there. But the cat picture didn't change. And what I realized is I actually set it to the same picture that I had before. So let's go in here and just change this to cat four. And we're gonna rerun this really quickly here. And we wanna make sure we pick my note five that I have up and running. So once this loads and we're installing the APK now, we should actually get a, there we go. So we've updated to the cat four image. So that's all there is to it. Like you can do almost anything that you want to do in code. You can programmatically create elements. You can assign them to parents. You can access them with this find view by ID. Just keep in mind that you need to name them appropriately. And one cool thing that I'm going to show you on the way out here 
is that if I hit Alt Enter here, I can actually extract a stream string resource and I can name this for left cat name or left cat, let's just call it left cat string. So you can go through and write your code with the strings you want in here and then extract them and it'll put it in the strings.xml file. Now if I control click on this, you can see that I have actually created a string resource and when I go back to my Java file, I'm actually referencing the string resource. That is super cool. So feel free to do that too when you go through just to get rid of those warnings. And this is actually what you should be doing in production. All right, that's it for today. Hopefully this has been helpful and now you understand how to access your elements in Java. And this gives you another building block to make awesome apps with. All right, everyone, until next time, keep coding.